the first clear morning since the storm, and there's no containing the relief as part of the frozen highway opens up. But it's not necessarily the all clear for everyone. Rigs and cars sit immobilized like sculptures, engines encased in ice. Even with reinforcements, Ontario Provincial Police are overwhelmed and at least one cruiser snowed under. Each one is going to have to be dug out and get on its way and then the next one after that will have to be dug out and it'll be a long slow process. But one by one, people like Anthony Smith, a Hamilton trucker. I'm free basically for now. Are back in business. Just one of the hundreds who spent two nights in community halls like this one. Thank you very much. A warm silver lining to this winter emergency. They treated us like royalty. You couldn't ask for better. This small town people got hearts as big as all outdoors. So even when they've cleared this chunk of the 402 of snow, it's not so simple. The vehicles still need to be towed. They're parked on solid ice. Local tow truck companies have worked round the clock. Uh, we've pulled 15 tractor trailers already and about 60 cars. In how many hours? That's in, that's all within the last 24 hours. More in one day than a good month. Orderly, get into a single file line and we'll... By late afternoon, another warming center gets the green light. Ferried by bus, escorted by the mayor herself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. About 50 people are cleared to reclaim their cars. But there's a long road ahead for the hundreds of others still waiting, still barely believing they survived a frigid night on the side of a highway. We'll take a look at, um, at the circumstances, take a look at how this thing evolved and ask ourselves whether there's anything that we might have done better to ensure that these kinds of things don't happen anymore. This logistical nightmare is by no means over. Road crews estimate it could take until at least Saturday before the last vehicle is off the highway and out of harm's way. Lloyd. Lisa, this had all the signs of a major rescue operation. The army in there, the police. Give us a sense of the scope of it all. Such a massive scope, and as you say, on so many levels. Even today, six more military choppers were constantly flying overhead, scanning, making sure there was no one still stranded. Uh, well over 100 OPP officers from right across the province doing everything from directing traffic to literally shoveling cars out that were buried under. And of course, locally, every snowplow, every snowmobile mobilized. Now it'll all go under the microscope to see what worked and and ultimately what didn't work, and whether better communication could have averted this in the first place. And you were right there in the midst of that warm Canadian hospitality and got a close-up view of it as well, I hear. <laughs> we certainly did. I have to say my cameraman Stefan and I ended up getting stuck in a massive snowdrift, and out of the snow squall comes a man with a backhoe who dug us out and even offered us a place to stay for the night. So to Elsie and Alphonse, we thank you. Hot chocolate and uh, Christmas cooking. Honestly, Lloyd, it was like a scene out of It's a Wonderful Life, but every time a bell rings, someone gets their car back. So I feel like I should be signing off from Bedford Falls tonight. And there's a house in Watford, Ontario, with Lisa Laflamme slept here, carved <laughs> into the doorway. Thank you, Lisa. Good night.